you. What? Up? All right. Um. So, uh, we got season three, episode eleven of the Ricky Gervais show. Hmm. Okay. Okay. What we got? This is wartime. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Wartime. Wartime. Heavy. Heavy subject. <laughs> it's a heavy subject. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Especially right now. Yeah, yeah, with a lot going on, you know. Okay. I pray that everybody's safe. Yep. You know, definitely. Um, this is going to be an interesting subject for the three, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah especially for Carl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially for Carl. <laughs> especially. Well, let's see what, let's, let's see what Carl's got to say. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. <laughs> Well, Carl, you are officially a published author, and and well, a copy will go in the British Library. Well, they, well yeah. they have to take every rubbish. I think it will go in the British Library lavatory. With like a collection of like novelty postcards and yeah, maybe exactly. a visa compendium. Well, you know. Yeah. So they have to they take everything. Just think of that. But why do they do this? Why do they think they've got to keep everything? Because it's. We're living in a world now where everything is sort of binnable, and you know we, we use stuff. Binnable, binnable. Uh, binnable. <laughs> what it is. Well, that, that, I no, think I think that's, you could say that. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Um, <laughs> there was a sort of poetry to it, but I think he stumbled across that. I don't think it was intentional. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm st I still haven't got over him saying foodage. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Though? The, the world's changed, so why is that rule still hanging foodage. around? When well, it's not a rule. I mean, it's not a rule that you know the the country's going to you know live and die by it's just that it is seen as a, a, a repository for knowledge for information and I don't believe any old joke can wander in there and get one of these books I think you have to either be a scholar I think yeah. maybe it's open for a brief window for students but you know you can't you could just wander in there and see your own book can't you know there are some books that uh, they have to turn the page for you in, in gloves so you the amino acids okay. uh, with yours, it won't matter. They just go it's over there, or they throw it to you. No, it's just. Or they slide, they slide it along the floor. They say, "Well, I, I can't give it to you, Carl, because it's propping up this desk." <laughs> yeah, they kick it to you and say, "Put it in the bog when you're finished with it." It's just that thing of being timed, though. I hate it when people go, "Oh, have you read this?" And then I can't read it properly. I'm thinking, they're thinking I'm taking ages here. Do you know what I mean? So I have to scan read it. And they go, oh, it's good, that. And they go, what do you think? And I go, oh, about what? <laughs> <laughs> so I hate the fact that someone's stood there with gloves on, because that isn't normal, relaxing sort of reading, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not, you're going to read the Doomsday yeah. Book, let's say, in order to just have a relaxing read. You're going in there to study there it. There are you know, say, they're professors and scholars and scientists and historians. <laughs> They don't wander in because it's raining, and they go, what's a good read? There's not a man wearing <laughs> white gloves turning the pages of the latest Jackie Collins. <laughs> Link, do you have heat? What, watching I... your lips move as you read <laughs> to see if you can turn the next page. <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't really feel guilty, because at the end of the day, right, I mean, people always rave about Shakespeare saying, oh, yeah, his mm. work was good. Mm. But Brilliant. at the same time... He'll probably put that on the book when he brings another one out. He'll put your review on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was good. Carl Pilkington. But at the same time, you know, like, some people will have a go. I'm ready for, for people having a go. Like that Wendy did about my little films made. You know, their opinions. Yeah, she slammed Carl. No, well, you know, each to their own and that. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if everyone liked the same thing, I don't know what we'd do. Right? Sure. Um, you don't know anything. So, so all I'm saying is everybody raves about Shakespeare. Mm. When, if you properly looked at what he did, he, he invented a lot of swearing words, right? Effin yeah. and Jeffin and that. Now, if that was if, one of his. Well, it's Effin and Jeffin and Effin and Jeffin part two. <laughs> but all I'm saying is, for some well, reason, when things are, are brought out years ago, um, people say they're good even though they're not. Is what I mean. When I was watching that documentary about the the real Indiana Jones, um, brilliant. They dug out um, some rocks with drawings on. 
And they were like, oh, don't damage them, don't, don't mark the paint. And, and it's like, it's rubbish. It was like a stick fella with a yak. And, uh, <laughs> now, if that was found now, or if a kid brought, showed me that, I'd go, hey, it's not that good. So what I mean is, because stuff's old, old stuff gets respect. But you're not judging it on its aesthetic merits, you're judging it on its historical importance. I don't because... think that's fair, though, because when that, when that fella drew that, it wasn't old. He did it when he was knocking about. <laughs> you, 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 you must see the difference between you doing a, a stick man on a wall with a bit of chalk near your local and a, a cave painting that, 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 that they date to 10,000 years ago. Yeah, so in 10,000 years' time, when they find my story, will it gain more respect then than it is now? No, less. <laughs> why is it? I, I... Because people will more and more realise what a buffoon you are. <laughs> the more research we do, the more you expose yourself as an empty, egg-headed uh, moron. <laughs> That's a friend speaking right there. Look at your face. <laughs> uh, he loves you like a brother. <laughs> I'm just, I just think, you've mentioned him before, Steve, uh, this Peeps fella. Yes. Has he done anything else apart from the diary? Because now, now I've done a book and a diary. That means you're better than Peeps, well, is what just, you're thinking. Well, I'm not going to say <laughs> that until I know, but what else did he do? Well, Peeps wasn't a writer predominantly. I right. believe he was, uh, you know, like a bureaucrat or something. But he kept a diary which has since become a historical landmark. And what did he say in it? <laughs> well, it's, again, more because it's both well-written and it's also an amazing insight. A social into, document a social as well. Document. Yeah. yeah. It's a social document I of mean, that yours period. is a social document, but... It, it sort of revolves around uh, having egg and chips in a cafe and seeing a ladybird, <laughs> which, you know... But that's that's today's living. That's well, his, dis- his describes the Great Fire of London, which is what it's most... It's we we haven't had one of them. If we had one, I'd write it down. I'm only writing what's happening. He, he was just lucky. He was about in London when that happened. The thing is, <laughs> if they read your diary, they think, well, uh, nothing happened that year. Nothing important in the world happened that year. Because your diary doesn't just mention... I mean, OK, yes, it, does, it fails to mention any disasters in London because we haven't had any. It doesn't mention any world events. It doesn't <coughs> men- mention wars in Iraq, it, terrorism. It doesn't mention now. anything. But that's all being wrote about anyway. If you're saying there's a museum that's keeping everything, there's loads of other books on that. Who's looking at the fella whose skulls fell off? What? <laughs> you see? It's interesting, isn't it? A fella's skull has fell off. What do you mean, his skull has <laughs> fell off? It's something to do with circulation. But what do you mean his skull fell well, off? Well, it's in the diary. We but how can a skull diary. fall off? Because it's surrounded by <laughs> tissue and it's got a brain. How can, <laughs> skull, how, can it, how can it detach itself from all the stuff surrounding no, it? He mislaid all his dreams. But, but, <laughs> but all I'm saying is that's, <sighs> that's not getting a look in. No, because it's not significant or probably true. <laughs> Carl, you have the same concepts that you worked out and decided that were true at about ten, I think. I look at life like a... Like a, big book, like a big book. <laughs> right, OK. Yeah. Right, and, you know, sometimes oh, you get halfway through it and you go, even though I've been, you know, been enjoying it, I've had enough. Um, Give us another book. No, 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 no. no. Your metaphor, analogy, whatever you're, you're trying to create there, falls down with let's have another book. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You, you can either opt out of life or stick with it till the end. You can't go, ah, be someone else now. You can't do that. I know you think you can. And I think in your world you can, you know, it possibly be injected into an old woman's head <laughs> when you've had enough and you come out a little baby. What I mean is, at the moment, you know, my life... Uh, I'm going to live to 74, 75, okay. right? right? So, yeah, I'm probably on page... What am I on? A, a book that's got about... This is painful, Steve. <laughs> this is really painful. Go on, sorry, I'm, carry on. I'm on... I say if my book's got... Uh, it's there because he wrote it 300 pages in it, <laughs> Pictures and that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a picture book. That's the great thing. Yeah, I was yeah. like, <laughs> it's a <laughs> book for children. <laughs> it's a, it's a book. <laughs> and it just every page he pops in, he goes. Huh? What? <laughs> I'm probably on like page about 170. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to die at 74. He's reading a book with a few pictures in with 300 pages and he's on 170. Go on then. So, right, if, if the book was too thick, right, and there was loads more Let me tell stuff, you, this book is way too thick. Yeah. <laughs> if it was more thick, yeah. <laughs> the book could not be thicker. If there was loads more pages left, I'd go, I can't be bothered reading on. 
Right. <laughs> okay. Well, you uh, couldn't finish the analogy. Must have known that when he saw the book. You have <laughs> got to finish this analogy, right. otherwise we're going to be here all Listen, night. Listen, <laughs> he must have known how many pages there were when he got the book out of the library. <laughs> yeah, but the way they write books. They're painting pictures more at the beginning, you're going, this is good. And then it, it gets a bit boring as it goes on, doesn't it? OK, well, that works. So you're saying that you, you no, were young... No, it doesn't work. Well, you no, just well, accepted no, that's what all books are like. No, but there's a little bit of poetry in that, cos he's sort of... He's actually saying that, you know, when he was young, his whole life was ahead of him, he couldn't wait the whole world, the promise that he was given of this world, and now he's, he's, he's a bit jaded and he's more cynical, and he realises that the world hasn't <laughs> got a, a, as much to offer him as he thought it was. Is that what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> that ain't what he meant. Actually, Carl, you like sayings, don't you? I've um, got a list here sure. of some of the, 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 the sayings and phrases that, that Shakespeare made up, really. Um, in a pickle was his. In a pickle? Yeah. Well, well, um, and we know what in a pickle yeah, means. Yeah, we know what it means. I, I, it's a saying I, I'd never use. Because when you're in a pickle, it's not something that you would say. No, if you're being sort of, if you're captured and you're being tortured for information, yeah, you wouldn't, and you and you get access to a phone, you wouldn't call go. Am I five? I'm in a pickle. Mm. <laughs> you'd be screaming, going. You take a bit of tea. <laughs> Why are you talking about that? I just was looking on the computer at uh, the Pun of the Day website. Uh, there's a couple that you might you might like. There was a sign on the lawn at a drug rehab centre that said, keep off the grass. OK, OK, now if the pun is the lowest form of wit, and let's face it, sarcasm isn't, sarcasm is up there compared to the pun, then the drug pun, I think, is one of the lowest of the low. Keep oh, off the grass. people who congratulate themselves on getting drug references, keep off the grass, we <laughs> Grass, we yeah, yeah, smoking the grass, yeah. <laughs> I think pun should be short for punch him in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Idioms are better. Go on then, what's an idiom? Okay, go uh, Is that a new word you made up? <coughs> no, I think Carl Pilkerton's a complete idiom. <laughs> yeah. I, I found out what it was because I thought, oh, I like them, what are they? Right. And it's like little sayings. Yeah, that's right. That's some stuff up. Go on, give us an example of your favourite. Oh, can I can just say one, uh, 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 talking about sayings, Carl was getting fed up with summer. He was, uh, uh, he was fed up with not getting replies from something. He's, you know, he's having a hard time, you know. And uh, I went, oh, the worm has turned. He went, what? I went, the worm has turned. You know, you've... Stupid saying, isn't it? No, t well, OK, tell him why you think that's a stupid saying. Because how do you know when a worm's turned? <laughs> <laughs> of all the creatures that you could flip over and know it's turned, why pick a worm? Yeah. It's, a bad, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the right. worst thing they could have picked to express something turning. But you're doing turning literally. It means changing, doesn't it? Changing your attitude. A new broom, turning over a new leaf. Yeah, but, but uh, it's different now. Uh, I'm sick of it. Chameleon. No, but chameleon it's... is a brilliant thing to use for something to change. Oh. Chuck that in the sentence. There's, there's, there's nothing that you can link a worm to human life to. You're talking about something that's... It, it's blind, isn't it? It's blind, it's <laughs> deaf. It's okay. It's got no features. <laughs> Why is he having such a go at a worm? Just because it's it's a weird thing to use. Something that his heart is more it does more than its head. <laughs> <laughs> that could be said of you, Carl, to be fair. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim Pants is that? He's gone and written it down again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just reading excerpts oh, of Carl's diary. Went home and looked up Freud on the internet. Didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle. Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. <laughs> to lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah, yeah. good that. Maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that. If you're going to watch, don't stand around the start line. Go to the end, where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense. It makes like, well, every step starts with a step or whatever. Say uh, again? Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a, with, with a step. Yeah. If you want to stay at the start line, do. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm just saying, if 
if you're into it, I'm not. I would watch a race, right? Okay. But all I'm saying is, right. If I was to watch a race, yeah, I wouldn't hang about the start line because. Well, you I'm just said you would. What, did I? Yeah, you said that's the race start. Cause <laughs> every every race starts with a step. No, but I wouldn't normally. When I was on holiday. Yeah. Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road. Yeah. I'd go. Well, let's go. Keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you thought? Zoo, yeah. I'd say, well, hang on a minute. Every race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people are around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah, I'll go, let's go there, then it's less busy. <laughs> right, and what would you see there, then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them, because I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end, then? I, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. OK, <laughs> so you wouldn't want to see the first step, then? So what do you think of Lazoo now, then? Uh, I preferred the leading people from behind. OK, and what would you do to lead someone now, then? Um, well, if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go all right. So anyway, you went there. That's not really leading them, though, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh, I've just walked into a big hole. I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole, but they've learned a lesson. They won't go in a hole again. <laughs> Oh my god! I've never been part of. I mean, that was incredible. Never mind Aristotle and Socrates. Uh, that was incredible. That. That was incredible, Carl. <laughs> One of the key catchphrases, if you like, from the war, Carl, was of course, "Keep the home fires burning." What? Is that like saying you're away, but don't worry when you come home, the house is warm? <laughs> Pretty much, sort of. Yeah. Never forget where you're from, we're, we're remembering we're here. you. Waiting for you. Yeah. Again, it doesn't say what it means. So there's you, you know, risking your life and you're getting a letter from saying we've got the heating on. <laughs> Again, working hard, paying the bills, they've got the heating blaring. Put your coat on. Start panicking, we're keeping it on fire burning. What? I didn't know what you mean, got fire. When we had that in? I thought we had central heating. <laughs> who's who she got in? Who's this bloke who's moved in, changed the heating system? <laughs> Oh, it's all extra hassle. Do you know, yeah, it's, this is why it's best not hearing from people. Go on. I was Brilliant. in the jungle, wasn't I? Yeah. Right? For this program. Uh, just, it should explain that um, Carl wasn't on manoeuvres. We sent Carl around the world for a program. Um, mm. And, uh, yeah. Um, well, hang on, though, I want to hear about it, the fact he was in the jungle and he, he didn't want to hear anything from home because. No, on a lot of the trips, I had a phone now and again so I could call Suzanne. When I was in the jungle, I was out of contact for like five days, nothing. Didn't know what was going on where, right? right. I get out of the jungle, I call Suzanne up, everything all right? Yeah, what bills have we got? Um, and then I said, how, you know, how was it? And she said, it was reassuring, you know, it was all right, and it's reassuring that if you died, it'd be all right. What? That was from Susan. <laughs> what do you mean? What because she sort of... She, it was like I was dead for five days. She said things weren't that bad. I still got stuff sorted out. It was reassuring. She said what? She uh, said... You called her up after five days of being in the jungle, eating uh, grubs and having things twice to climb up your knob. Yeah, yeah. surviving. Right. There's me, the first phone call I get. I put the phone on. I'm going to call Suzanne, let her know I'm all right. Sorry, and you could get the phone calls in the jungle, but you didn't want it. What do you mean you turned the phone on? I thought you meant you were... No, it was off, because there's no signal. You mean you got out of the jungle? You mean you got, you got, out, got out of the jungle, right. put the phone on, Yeah. thinking, right, I'll call Suzanne, let her know I'm all right. I've been to Ellen back here. Mm. Call her up, everything all right. Uh, you know, what's it been like? Not, not. To, I said, it, that's the longest we've ever gone, isn't it? I don't think I've ever gone 24 hours without talking to her for 17 years. Yeah. And suddenly, there's a week when wow. I'm not talking to her. Yeah. She goes, yeah, it started off weird, but it's reassuring that if you were dead, I can handle it. Because she said, I sorted everything out still. I could handle it if you were dead. Now, what, now yeah. what offended you most? Um, the well, just the like, fact that you did... That, that, uh, you want her to be dependent on you, or the fact that you realise you make no difference <laughs> at all in her life. Well, it's a bit annoying, isn't it? They forget, don't they? The bills weren't as piling up as, as much as they normally do. That's the only thing they'll get through the door. You know, when there's a postal strike, carry on. I'm not interested. You're only bringing bills to the door anyway. Carry on striking. There wasn't that much post. 
There wasn't that many bills to sort out. There wasn't problems with the boiler. She's forgetting all this. So right. I'd like to go back in the jungle, yeah. just as the boiler's sort of, the flame starts to flicker, yeah. and about to go yeah. out. Let's see you then. That's what I'd say to any soldiers listening to this before you leave home. Yeah. Just leave yeah. everything. Break a few things. Uh, don't pay the bills, and then go. And yeah. they'll miss you more. Yeah. Well, that's great advice to people overseas. Uh, <laughs> let me just reiterate that. Um, the next time, when you come home, have a great time uh, with your wife and kids. See, you, see your mum and dad and your family. Um, but then, when you've just got to go back into active service, just uh, smash the place and your shit everywhere. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Carl, what's your thoughts on poetry? Uh, I've never really been a, a fan of it. This is surprised. It's sold in a bad light. It's a bit sort of, a bit gay, isn't it? I mean, okay. it depends what sort you're talking about, because uh, maybe there's poetry out there that I haven't heard. There's some poetry gayer than others. Yeah, you can't do poetry can't be gay, can it? That was I haven't heard. Go on. People fighting in the trenches and can't be gay. They weren't gay. They were, they were writing to their sweetheart. I, I don't know his name. It might, might have been a bloke, I don't know. But... So was, <laughs> it, was it a sort of a... What sort of poem was it? Was it a sort of a limerick, sort of a... Like, no, it was... Like... It was uh, well, there's, there's, there's famous ones, Wilfred Owen and Secret Sassoon, and they're very moving. They're about, uh, you know, the, 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 what usually happens is that they talk about, why are we here? This is, you know, we've been, we've been sold a, a lie here. You know, and they really started seeing war in a different light from, from, from their point of view in the trenches. Famously, some of them died... So soon after the, you know, but I prefer they'd written a the poem. proper, a proper letter, no sort of crypticness. That's the problem with right. poems. Okay, so you'd, been, you'd have been disappointed to get Dolce decorum mess through the post, would you? You'd have just said, "What are you trying to say, mate? Is, what's the weather like when you're coming home? Did you get my socks?" Well, yeah. Sometimes life is a bit like that, and it? it's like, say what you mean. Right. Well, that's well. Then that you have just. Wiped all art off the face of the earth if you literally just say what you mean. No, I'm just saying in a letter. Say if I say if I was a woman and my fella was fighting in a war. Right. What's your fella's name? The, Harry. Okay, so Harry. Oh, no, no, it's right. So when were you married? Uh, about 19, uh, 1935. 1935. So uh, you've been married about four years. Yeah. Harry, why don't, you, why don't you go off? Oh, you're a woman, aren't you? Mm. you don't, okay. So what, 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 what did you see in Harry? What, what, what did you, why did you like Harry? Was he? He just was like funny. Uh, butch. Wasn't that butch? But that no. didn't matter about that. <laughs> no. And you, and you, like everyone. But what did you say when Harry was said, was said to you? Well, I, I, I thought he was coming. <laughs> did a lot of uh, a lot of our friends. Right. Up did you just hug him and say don't go or something? There's no point because that would have just made it tough for him. So, <laughs> what's the point? Just go with it. But if he I cried after he went, you cried after he went. That's what you do, isn't it? You wouldn't do it in front of him. He's got. To, he's got to go to battle. Okay. So your man goes off to battle. Right. Then you get a, a letter from the colonel right. saying, "Oh, bit of bad news. Harry's dead." Now I get a letter in the post. He said. He said what he meant, didn't he? In the... Well, yeah, and they would do, wouldn't they? They wouldn't yeah. funny around saying, "Oh, he was he was on the warpath and the cloud, the cloud went dark." I go, well, what, "What? Just tell me what happened. I don't want a weather forecast." He got shot at the arse and the bullet came out his head. Right. <coughs> now the colonel, he, he would just tell me the basics. Now because he sent his by um, telegram, telegram, telegram. <laughs> they sent the telegram. Mm. The letter I get from Harry has been stamped, so I get it late. Oh, okay. So I get a letter from uh, from Harry after he's died. <laughs> yeah. Right, and you know he's dead. I know he's dead, so I get right. this letter with his handwriting on. I'm yeah. devastated because I was just getting over his death. Yeah. It's all brought back to me when this letter drops through the post. Well, yeah, three right. days and you're pretty much over it. It's Harry's yeah. handwriting. Yeah. Oh, God, what's this? What's and I open it. Yeah. And instead of saying things are bad here, socks are damp, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Everything's grim, it's cold, I'm sick of it. There's a poem. It wouldn't feel like it was from Harry. Well, but it's Harry... not in his words. Poems are never in the, in the person's words. But didn't you know Harry was a poet when you married him and made love to him? No, I picked it up because all the people were doing it. Something to do in the trenches. But when he carried you over the threshold, Carl, and he, he laid you down and gently kissed you, didn't he, didn't he say any... Didn't he ever... So he must have whispered some sweet nothings into no, your hysterical like red hair. No, no, straight to the point. He was like, get your knickers off. That's one of the biggest fucking scenarios.
videos I've ever heard. I can't go back in. What was the point? Was the telegraph coming before the letter? So specific. It wasn't like Harry the Fox, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> See the fish, cause the start. Yeah. <laughs> Say it again, Carl. It was over. <laughs> it was over from that point for me explaining that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, man. Poetry's not gay. <laughs> not it, man. Yeah, poetry, poetry. a lot of people do poetry. Yeah, man. You know it's a great way to express yourself. Music is kind of like poetry. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Carl's read a, wrote a couple poems. You know what I mean? Carl's a poet. Yeah. Not just that Carl is a poet. <laughs> he, he don't even know it. <laughs> Carl's a poet. He don't even know it. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, he loves to rhyme. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and his, uh, and the diary of Carl. Diary. <laughs> Compared herself to Peeps, Peeps diary. He said, "I've got a book and a diary." <laughs> What's Peeps then? Ah man, so your diary's comparison to a children's book. He's <laughs> uh, like, you have no, you have no events, no dates, no. <laughs> Maybe one day Carl's diary, you know, might go down as one of the most, you know. <laughs> I think it's gonna be. I mean, hey man, see, see, and that's the thing. See, Carl, Carl shouldn't want that. Carl shouldn't want a diary like, uh, you know, what I'm saying like, 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 like the, like that other person. You know what I'm saying? Be happy for the life you live. You know what I mean? Good trying to, you know. But anyways, but again, his diary, his diary is not done. I mean, he could have more pages to it. Like he's probably it. still writing his diary. <laughs> he's probably still writing it today. <laughs> but some shit like if there was a great uh, fire, there's like a fire that that burned everything in the world, and the only thing left was Carl's diary, <laughs> and that's the only thing we had. <laughs> oh, God, you got me. Yeah, and they found this. Like, oh, this is what life was like. <laughs> They sat around and looked at bugs. <laughs> exactly. A like wasp and a beetle? A volcano. This is boring vacation <laughs> with parents. Like, what the hell are they doing back in 2000? Yeah. Jeez. Uh, a seven foot, a six foot seven bug eyed freak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> six foot seven bug eyed freak. Uh, and a fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a fat. <laughs> what was this face from? Uh, the Flintstones. <laughs> a fat Fritz. A fat Fritz. A fat Fritz. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, burn that book now. Yeah. <laughs> burn it now. <laughs> 